here, so I wanted to be sure that I kind of bring it all together, and uh, you know, all of you guys will come out here with you know, some key nuggets to to take away, right? Because we talked about you know, from Bitcoin to advertising to making a social media star to transformation, and then I realized. Actually, I asked this to Brian, and you know, to be honest with you, I'm just in Cebu, in the Philippines, for 24 hours. I flew from San Francisco. Arrived this morning, leaving tomorrow in San Francisco, right? For this conference. And when I asked Brian, what is the thing that hopefully we'd learn? It's, it's not about the skills, but actually about mindset. Mindset for you, mindset for maybe your employees, mindset for your bosses, right? So I want to focus on... Um, so I wrote this blog, which actually is in an article in Manila Times or something now. Seven leadership traits to lead the next digital century, which is really the digital mindset, right? Um, so hopefully these, some of these nuggets you'll get to take away. Uh, let's kind of see where it goes. Okay. So I said, I'm the last person to talk here, and I want to be sure that it's of value, right? So if you have ever wondered, how can you lead during these rapid shifts in the next century, please stay, right? Am I prepared for all these competition, local and global, please stay? And am I making sure that the careers of my employees, and actually, if you have kids, your children, or your nieces, or your nephews are secure, please stay, right? If not, then you can go home and, I guess you can go to the after party and get wasted already, right? Um, so, See, where is the, the trigger? Okay, so who, who am I, right? So I always, people, every time someone talks, I'm always gonna ask like, you know, who is this person and why will I spend time with him, right? And at least for me, I've seen it in many different aspects, right? From the startup world, so I've started, you know, a venture advising firm, I started DS Space, which is the larger accelerator now in the Philippines. QBO, which is a public-private partnership with DTI, DOS, DICT to kind of uh, the national innovation program of the country. Um, I work in Cisco. I was head of innovation for Smart, and I was in Dell. Um, and actually, I went to UP, Stanford, uh, Boston, and Cornell. Right. So um, I've seen it in many different aspects, both local and global. And I wanted to share with you kind of my own thoughts on how to prepare ourselves for the digital century, not by skills but of mindset. <coughs> Right. So, um, talking about authenticity, I want to start every talk with something not just about the resume, but actually about myself. Right. So, two truths and a lie. Who here has heard about this game? Right. So, this is more like I don't know, sa Tagalog yun, usapang lasing game, right? Which is, I don't know. What's your two truths? The three things and then two truths and then one is a lie, right? So, for me, like this is my two truths and a lie, right? I married my high school prom date. My grandfather's from Manila, and I failed engineering subjects in college, actually a lot of subjects in college, right? Um, so who here, number one, who, who, what's the lie na lang? Number one, is this the lie? Okay. Number two, is this the lie? Okay, so number two, okay, lie. Number three, ibe lie? Okay, so parang abstain, pero it seems I heard a lot of yeses at number one, but di ata kayo hopeless romantic dito sa Cebu, eh? Kind of funny, but I'm sure you are, right? Um, actually, I'll tell you the funny thing here. Uh, that's, oh, going back, sorry. Yes, I married my prom date. In fact, that's our picture. So this was us when we were in high school, right? So her name is Patricia, and then now this is us uh, in our picture with our two kids, probably three months ago in New York, right? So at least that's true. So you know that I have kids, you know that I married my high school prom date, and maybe I'm a hopeless romantic somewhere there. Right? Um, let's see. Yeah, lie actually. So my grandfather is from Davao. So that's why when Brian said this is one of the largest or hopefully going to be the de facto tech conference in the Vismin for transformation, I said yes because our family is from Davao City. Right? So we, my, fam my grandfather was an entrepreneur. He was in real estate and uh, we own the Memorial Park in Davao City. Right? And as uh, you know, truth, a uh, truth that I last, right? So I failed two subjects in in uh, in my life. Uh, UP, uh, I failed uh, an engineering subject, and then in New York, in Cornell, I failed the wine class. So unfortunately, right? So uh, 
Yeah, I couldn't get. Kasi medyo sinasa. Ang tanong nga is, what type of soil goes to this uh, wine? And I was like, I don't know. It just tastes good, di ba? Um, but that's kind of how it is. And I think I, I drank too much during the wine class. I don't remember the lectures. Now. Um, so yeah, so I mean, I, I flew from San Francisco. I took an, I think, 16, 17 hour flight to get here. And I thought, you know, what is really the secret of Silicon Valley? People talk about that. Whatever, right? There's like comedies about it, etc. Right? And I reflected, it's not a place. Or right? probably you know what the answer is, right? Because that's the name of my thing. It's mindset, right? It's mindset. It's how you should, how people think, how people do business, how people engage. And to be honest, we can have a hint of Silicon Valley in all of us, right? Because it's not a place. It is something here, and it's here. Right, so that's something to really think about, and I'll tell you maybe the next slide, which is four. Uh, there we go. Seven digital mindset. Uh, it seems like an eyesore, but I'll guide you through what these things are. And by the way, keep me honest at the time because uh, I tend to kind of go in different places, right? So, number one, speed is the new currency. Being fast, getting feedback from the market is something very important. And preparing to fail is something that you should just think about when you either do a campaign, launch a product, service your customers. You have to prepare that because you have to make sure you get data in order to change, right? So that's number one. Number two, do you have an ecosystem mindset? Do you think of how everyone can win versus how I can win? So maybe this actually, to be honest, this is one of the big generational shifts that's happening, right? So a real, true, digital person says, if I launch this product, who else partners can I launch it with in order for it to be successful? It's not just me, but other people, so that we can make sure we can be grow an industry, grow a new segment of the population, right? Get more mind share, right? So it's not just me, but maybe other people want to join. Uh, Actually, this is going to be really interesting, right? Like, are you ready? Are, are the people that you're going to hire ready for a multi-track career path? And I've seen this, right? And I'll explain it later a little bit more. But I've seen a lot of resumes now where they were marketing for the first two years. Then they went to production, right? They went maybe to operations. Then after that, they went to become a freelancer to do digital media, right? Like. A resume is not one track anymore. And you should not penalize people <coughs> applying to you with that type of resume as well. Right? Because you actually want diversity of experience in the digital world versus just a one track experience, right? Um, uh, this is kind of more philosophical, but it's actually quite important, right? And it, it ties in actually to the whole authenticity thing. Do you know your strengths or not? Do you know your employee strengths or not? And maybe this is something, I mean, in UP this was inculcated to me, I don't know why, it was kind of a, a weird thing. They want, at least the previous world that I was exposed to was, what are you weak in and make sure you don't do what you're weak at, or like, make sure you work on some of your weaknesses. It's always like, work on your weaknesses, work on your weaknesses. The next, gener the next world, right, the next world of digital is, what is my strength? And I, I won't ignore my weakness, I will acknowledge my weakness, but I will work at my strengths more than my weaknesses. Okay? Um, here's for leadership, right? Um, lead from the heart and not from the mind. People will know if you really care for them. Your employees, your customers, right? Your shareholders, your owners, do you really care about what you're doing? Because now it's very transparent and people would get to know if you really care. Um, this is actually something that's kind of scary for a lot of people. If you're any business today, any business, even if you're like a coffee shop, right? How do you think, act, and dream global at day one? And it's because Number one, the good thing is that your opportunity now is global. Imagine if you're a coffee shop, you can maybe sell your coffee, you know, grounds all over the world, right? But the other part is, 
your competition is global. Even if you think you're in Cebu, or Davao, right? Or Bacolod, or Dumaguete, it's like, ah, there's for the big people. I'm telling you, right now, you have to think, act, and dream global day one. And the last one is, it's the authenticity part, which I think is a big theme of this conference, right? People who know themselves, values, and their purpose will generally have happy, happier lives, right? Because the amplification part of social media really gets to people that's inauthentic. So maybe these are seven lessons, and I'll go really quick to each one so that at least we can have that conversation uh, later on, right? So this is a guy, uh, Mark Benioff of Salesforce, and he kind of actually coined this phrase that I mentioned a while ago. Speed is a new currency, right? And Salesforce is one of the fastest growing ones. And why is that? Maybe this is a US thing, but think about it today, right? So the red line is department stores, right? The blue line is e-commerce sales. You'd say, yeah, that's the US, Earl, that's the US, you're in San Francisco, Silicon Valley. But guess what? This thing happened in 2011. And even if we're maybe five year delayed, six year delayed, seven year delayed, maybe even 10 year delayed, this is gonna happen in the next three years. These guys have faster operations than a lot of brick and mortar department stores in the Philippines today. If Alibaba, Amazon, Lazada says, you know what, we're gonna compete and really triple down, it's something to think about, right? So speed is their currency and that is leads to kind of the unfair competitive advantage compared to the digital department stores. And then the other opportunity is fast growing companies in the world, right? Like a, you know, a WhatsApp or an Instagram, etc. Right? Jet.com, right? Some of them take less than a year to be a billion dollar valuation company. Imagine if your company can do that. Now it's possible. It was impossible long ago. And now it actually is possible because real companies have done it that you use every day. So what are you going to do? Are you going to live in fear or are you going to live in opportunity? That's why speed is very, very important. Let's go next, right? So yeah, so I kind of mentioned that and even a way of doing things like agile is something to, to think about, right? Um, ecosystem mindset. Um, as I mentioned a while ago, right? So this is like a, when I built Idea Space, we kind of mapped out where do we interact in the world and what do we give to each part of it, right? So for example, we always went to college and universities and talked talk, talk them about like startups and entrepreneurship. We worked with, with NGOs. We worked with the government and how to create government programs. We worked with industry to make sure that people have a digital mindset. We work with the investment community from here, the US, Singapore, Israel, so we can all work together. And then what I just asked them, hey, this is who I am. What can you give to our common clients together? Right? So for example, our clients were startups. So all of these said, hey, we're an investment fund. What do you want to go? How do you want to participate in the digital world together with you? Right? In fact, we did it with Dentsu last time, right? So we brought in startups, Dentsu brought in corporate clients, and then we had like this interesting, we call it the startup studio together, right? So these are the things you should think about, right? You can't do it alone now because other people are doing it with other guys. Uh, and it's really a mindset, right? That's the one thing I mentioned a while ago, right? Like, this is what we're always used to, with him. With him, what's in it for me? me right but i think i want to change it right like the with us right maybe it's even a weird term but maybe with us right what's in it for us and if you think this way you just have what i call the possibility mindset right because you're not doing it by yourself but other people and other people's resources with you so you just amplify your influence uh, non-linear world, so uh, it's kind of obvious. I just pulled out like non-linear versus linear, right? But imagine that growth and career paths for a long time is like this. And 
you know, I've seen a lot of guys who are like, went first an account manager in an agency, maybe something, and then maybe hopefully creative director, and then maybe country manager, and maybe regional manager, and maybe something like that, right? It's very linear, right? And people just think, yeah, I have to go this path in order to make it on top. But then, career paths are all like this now, right? Like, you can be freelancer today, to be like a social media star tomorrow, and then next time you're going to be like a coder because you learned something in Udemy, right? All of a sudden, you have all these possibilities. And I'll tell you why. There are many jobs today that did not exist even two years ago. So, for example, uh, I just got a new role. So people call Dell EMC, etc. I got a new role for one of the largest banks in the world in San Francisco. That role did not exist three weeks ago, ever in the history of this bank. And the name of my role is called the Managing Director of Digital Catalysts. Right? The bank is what, 30 years old. And when I came in there, they're like, Earl, I think you're the right person for this job. The job that did not exist before. Right? But I had a very non-linear path, right? I mean, I went to the Philippines, I was in Silicon Valley, I went to like a hedge fund in New York, like it's just like, people are confused when they see my resume. But then that confusion, that diversity of experiences actually led to me being potentially the right person for a job that did not exist till three weeks ago, right? So your employees, yourself, right? will have, or might have, most probably ha will have, a non-linear path. But don't worry, because the jobs of the future, we still don't know. And you might be the person that leads that new job in the future. Right? So, what kind of boss are you? A lot of people here talked about that they're bosses, etc. right? This is a strengths discussion, right? So this is what I call the traditional way of thinking, right? Performance review. Who's, been, who's done performance reviews before with the employees? Or been in one? Right? You have to have a performance review. You can't have a race, right? I mean, I don't know how you guys do races, but typically at least a discussion with the boss. Like, But normally as a boss, and I've been done, done this, right? Um, you say, uh, excuse me, you're doing very well, but you get a lot of criticism doing this thing, so please work on it or else you need to promote this time, right? You need to work on your weakness to get promoted. That's like the additional way of people thinking about all the time, maybe the past 30 years for the industrial revolution. The digital way of thinking as a boss, and I hope you guys will all be, are either bosses or will be bosses in the future. When you do your performance review next time, start with this conversation. Let's find your strength and find a career path that optimizes this. And again, I highlight the your strengths, your employee strengths, not what your company needs. Because you, it's your job as a boss to align what their strength is and what the company needs. And that's where magic can happen in the digital world. Okay, let's go. Is it good? Good? Right? So I have 10 minutes left. Now I'm going to plow through this, but I want to be sure you guys are getting value, right? Um, and I thought like, hey, that's very philosophical, strengths, whatever, fluffy guys, right? Actually, there are studies, and this is uh, by, by a big research firm in Chicago called Gallup, and it says that the people who use their strengths every day are three times most likely, right? to report having excellent quality of life, six times more likely to be engaged at work, and eight times more productive, and, we talked about this a while ago, 15% less likely to quit their jobs. So this is not philosophical. This is proven by data that if you are the boss of the future, you start off with that conversation. What is your strength? and how can I optimize your career to maximize it? Empathy. Right? I had this whole conversation, one of the things there was all about empathy, right? Um, 
So I googled empathy, and it's just basically capacity to, to understand or feel another person. And people are like, fluffy na manito. Fluffy, it's too fluffy, right? Um, but the next digital world actually starts. So there's this thing called the design process that's piloted by IDEO in design school, which now led to like the lean startup and all these kind of buzzwords right now, right? But when you look actually at step one in the product development process, that lots of unicorn companies like WhatsApp, Instagram, etc., has built their businesses on step one is understanding the customer. Not what you think the customer should think about, but you actually have to immerse yourself, put yourself in their shoes, empathize, create a product for them, right? But sometimes when we get big, we forget. We forget that empathy is actually the basis of big business in the future, right? So that's something to kind of think about. I, I looked at this, right? By the numbers, and this is, I think, from New York Times or one of these uh, big uh, uh, publications. I said, if you just look at your target market as the Philippines, as Cebu first, and the Philippines maybe second, you are missing out in a huge opportunity today. Because the Philippines, as the global economy, only represents point. <coughs> 39% of the world. 0.39%. But I, as I mentioned, one of the digital mindsets, right, is can you at least dream global? Act global at day one. And if you do that, you just maximize the world of opportunity for you from maybe 0.39% to 1% of the world. Maybe 2%, 5%, 10% of the world. And that just creates a limited potential market for you, right? And one thing that I thought about is like, ah, that's like fake, bro. Like, that's not possible for us. And I want to ask, I want to like show an example. I know it's kind of a weird extreme example, right? But the digital world actually has gave us examples that it is possible. Facebook started with one university. One university, probably as big as, I don't know, Cebu Doctors or something, right? Um, or UP, UP, UP Visayas. But now, it's everywhere, right? Now I think it's a billion users, right? All over the world. So you, you think, ah, Cebu, ako Cebu, right? Like, yeah, the, the whole, like, you know, um, studio concept of, you know, uh, Republic Group, right? Like, how to amplify messages and getting like that, like, they can start in Cebu. Does it mean they end here? And another thing is, the Philippines needs you to think this way. We need more global companies that are Filipino-born and owned. Right? Imagine if Facebook came from here, right? That would be awesome. Right? Why, why does the one university have to come from the US? Why can't it be in UP Cebu? Right? I don't know, but I think it's possible. Okay. So this is like a picture that was taken, it was like in some retreat about uh, self-awareness, right? Um, and I mentioned it a while ago, right? Uh, authenticity is the premium in the new world, right? And I was there at a conference and there's this guy named Jay Shetty, I don't know if you guys know him, but he's one of these big influencers now on Facebook. And I had a conversation with him and I was asking him, why do you always talk about this messaging, which is, you have to be true to yourself. You have to be true to yourself. And I was like, why is it so resonating, right? And he just told me something that kind of shook me to the core. He said, at this generation, what happens is you actually live a life that someone else expects of you. Right? I gotta repeat that. Are you living a life that someone else is expecting of you? Either it's the social media world, either it's your friends, either it's your parents, either it's your family. But have you asked, what, who am I? And what, and will the world want to know who I am? And most likely the answer is yes. So that's something to think about, right? And you should know, hopefully reflect, 
what are your strengths, your values, the environment you want, your passion, your purpose, and share that to the world and be consistent all the time so you don't have to pretend and not have to catch up with other people expect of you. Okay, yeah, so, and that, I said like, oh, this whole like being yourself thing, like is that really resonating in social media where everybody thinks that they're fakers, right? Yes, so we are, Jay Shetty is the number one non, um, how do I explain it? Non-artista, non-brand in Facebook. As a person, right? He's the number one person that's non-celebrity and non-brand in Facebook. And what this always talks about? Authenticity and being yourself, right? So actually, it gives, he goes to the extreme and actually takes one whole month a year going to a monastery and thinking, who am I? And what message do I want to give to the world? Right? Because he's a monk, right? He was, he was like a monk for a number of years. So it is actually possible to do that, right? So um, this is my second and the last slide to wrap it up, right? And hopefully that this is something that is you know, of value to you and it brings everything together seamlessly um, talk about the different uh, topics in the past two days. So again, if, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll get this, right? Speed is a new currency. Ecosystem minded. How do you lead and have a multi career track career path? Do you know your strengths? Can you use the strengths of your people to take your organizations further? Are you leading really from the heart? Because empathy is the new currency with regards to product development for the digital world. Are you acting and dreaming global? Because our universe here is a small part, but the opportunity is such a bigger one. And last one, be yourself, know yourself. So I'll end my, uh, my presentation with uh, a slide uh, by John Nash, right? Which is, I don't know if you watched The Beautiful Mind, but he invented this thing called the game theory. And you know, as much as he's a scientist, he said something very interesting to wrap it together. The only thing greater than the power of the mind is the courage of the heart. So even if we live in the digital world where data is present, even if we live in a digital world where maybe you can even quantify your engagement, being yourself, knowing your people, and being human is actually the biggest asset in the next digital century. Thank you.